I'm nervous. <laughs> I feel weird. <laughs> okay. Oh, I feel bad for anyone that has to watch this. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully nobody watches. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Help me. Okay. Hello and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please do hit that subscribe button for more videos to come or check out the links below if you wish to support the channel in any other way via Patreon or affiliate links. We're back. I've got Kira here. You've not been on the channel for some while. If you haven't seen Kira's previous videos, I'll put the playlist down below. It's quite fun. It's sort of your hobby journey, isn't it? From nearly a year ago now, um, yeah. I think, from painting your first model. That's on there. She also has a Twitch stream, which is Kira Elvenblood, which you can now follow along. You, you do paint on there. You do... Where are you linking that? Not you do hobby stuff, generally. Okay. Or sometimes just drinking wine, eating cheese and... Classic. So do check that out as well. But in this video, you're going to airbrush some eels. You've got very little airbrushing experience, really, I think. Um, but you, I did do a how to airbrush video a few weeks ago. If you haven't already seen that, or you are thinking about airbrushing because you're watching this video, then do check that one out as well. But basically, we're just going to go through the model, leave you with everything, and I'll catch you guys back at the end. These are the models Kira is painting today. She has three of the eels from the Eidneth Deepkin from Age of Sigma. She has a 2000 point army ready to go and the airbrush seems like the best way to break the back of this army. We're here, Oliver's out, I'm in. I'm ready to go. Um, so I've watched this video and I feel like now is the time to do a beginner video from a beginner for a beginner. So you can sort of learn with me as I'm doing it. We'll work our way through the mistakes as they happen. Um, just a note, I don't have any gloves. You can wear gloves, you probably should wear gloves. It's not that essential. Painty fingers aren't going to kill you, but I don't have them because my hands are too small for the ones we have here. Also, I'm not going to be wearing a mask, mainly because I can't talk and wear a mask at the same time, but you should definitely wear a mask. Like, don't, don't get mad in the comments because you should be wearing a mask. I just won't be. You know, if I'm in the comment section, you know I haven't died from paint inflammation. That'll be a good thing. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah, I'm excited to get going and I hope I learn something while doing this and you learn something while doing this and it might turn into a what not to do video, but we'll see. So thanks for joining me. Okay, we ready to go? I'm ready to go. You ready to go? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Don't put that bit in. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm actually not ready. That's fine. Right, we're going to airbrush some eels. If I can do it, you can do it, because I am a novice. So what have we got? We've got our surface primer. I'm using this big old massive thing that somebody put down here for me to use. I don't really know anything about surface primer, but in general, it's a surface primer. Um, so I have my thinner, my cleaner, my paints. Some more paint. <laughs> now, the colors that I wanted are actually um, some regular old Citadel pot paints. So you don't have to use air paints if you don't want. I do have um, a white and a black. So I'm gonna surface prime with black and then do a zenithal highlight with white. Um, which people tell me is a good thing to do, but I don't know if that's true because I've never not done it. So Could be fake <laughs> So I've got my airbrush compressor That's a beer can. I don't know if you can see that but I'm trying to hide it there But then I just told you about it. So it's okay. And I've got my paint mixer and some water models That's everything you need Okay I've suddenly forgotten how to airbrush <laughs> Turn on airbrush step one the airbrush we will be using in this video was sent to me by the airbrush company, so thank you very much. This is the Spa Max Max 4 airbrush with a 0.4 needle and the airbrush mini compressor. A lovely piece of kit under 200 pounds and a great place to get you started. I'll drop a link down below so you can check it out for yourselves. So I actually have that set to five. Now, I don't understand what those units mean. PSI probably. I don't know what that stands for or if that's good, but I've used it at five before and it's an explode. So that's what I'm going to be using it at. Um, and we're just going to go and surface prime this bad boy. So I'm going to take some thinner and plop some in there. Now I wish I had a sheet of paper or something. I want to ruin this good side of the mat as well. So I just put a few drops of thinner in and we'll get our surface primer as well. Oh, and I need a paintbrush. Ow! So 
Personally, I use the Vallejo Airbrush Thinner, Airbrush Cleaner, and Flow Improver, but that is completely down to you as to what you want to use. Any other products I'm sure are just as good. And the surface primer here we are using is the Airbrush Vallejo Black. Give that a mix. In there with a crappy old paintbrush. Now, I'm actually going to backwash it to mix it a little bit. Now, everybody says don't do that because it'll blow a hole through your hand, but I haven't had that experience yet. But I will let you know if, um, if the end of this video is shot in the hospital, we've had an issue. Um, I'm actually gonna spray a little bit here just to see if it's thick enough or thin enough and it looks fine to me. Now, I'll be honest, when people do that, I don't entirely know what I'm looking for. I've done it before where I've been like, that's definitely too thin um, because it's just water. <laughs> But, but do test it, just so you can see. Like, if it's not coming out at all, it's obviously too thick. So I think that's fine. Um, so I'm gonna just spray the whole thing black. Now, as I said, I am a novice at this, so I do make mistakes. So this is just my experience doing things as a novice. So you're not going to want to spray one area too long or it's going to it's going to be too wet and you're going to have to, a lot of run marks which isn't good now if you find that um it's not coming out as it used to just blast it full blast on a sheet of paper or something maybe not on your actual mat <laughs> but um if there's any tiny little clogs that's going to blast it out of there so it's better to do it in short bursts as well rather than just constantly going I don't know why people just say that it is and I believe them so <laughs> I've painted myself into a corner and I don't particularly want to paint my fingers so I'm going to move on to the next model and then when that one's dry I'll hold it by the end and we'll come back it's really trial and error as well because like one issue I had when I started was how do you know if it's too thick and how do you know if it's too thin you will just know if you're using it and you're like, I don't know if it's too thick or too thin, it's neither because it's working fine. There's very obvious things that are gonna go wrong if it's too thin. If it's too thin, it's gonna start um, running and you'll just know. So it just takes practice. There we go. Ta-da, they're primed. I'd recommend making sure you get nice, even coverage when you do this, because this is going to be the full base layer for everything else you do. Get into those nooks and crannies, get into all the finer details because the airbrush allows you to do it. So I've got an empty pot, I've got a pot of water. I'm just gonna pour a little bit of water in there. That was a bit much. And then tip it out straight away so that gets any loose paint out. Do that a couple of times. And then I'm gonna run a little bit of water through the airbrush. That's probably fine, whoops. Now I'm gonna put a tiny bit of water in there and you can use your tissue or finger or whatever you want because there will be a little bit of dried paint inside the bowl. Using a bit of tissue or a cloth is probably the best way to go because you can just scoop it out like that. There's not much in there though. And then pour it out. I'm gonna run a little bit more water through. If you were finished painting and you weren't gonna do any more, you could um, run your cleaner through it at this point. <laughs> now, the reason that's happening is when I was transporting it, I think the sponge got wet. That normally doesn't happen. <laughs> and that's it, it's ready for your next paint. Here she is using the Air Vallejo White. Make sure you get this nice and thin to keep it nice and flat and get a good coverage. So now that we have our base on, we're gonna do our zenithal highlight. Um, I normally use the Liquitex white ink, but I don't have that with me today. So I'm gonna be using the Model Air Vallejo white paint, which needs a good shake. So I'm gonna use my Vortex shaker mixer thing, which is really satisfying to use. Sometimes it does send the paint pot flying across the room though. So I don't know if I'm just doing it wrong. The paint shaker has been a new addition to my arsenal for painting and I love it. I did a video recently, do check that out. I'll leave a link just above. And I'm going to turn the compressor on. Oh, that is so disappointing. <laughs> Worth a shot. Right, so again, I'm gonna mix it back this way and I'm going to test a little bit. Now that is too watery for sure because it's basically see-through. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more in. 
give it another mix. So use an old brush, but a nice long, soft brush so you're not damaging anything inside is the way to go. Little mix. And try again. So that's definitely better. So what you're gonna wanna do is hold it, pick an angle, and just keep it at the same angle from above. It's supposed to be where the light hits, but it's not gonna be naturally where the light hits because you're gonna do the same from both sides. So I like to start off the model and that way you don't accidentally blast it too hard. So if it gets a bit cloggy, don't forget you can just blast it through. For me, the xenophil stage is an important part of painting a model because it lets you see where the shadows are and it kind of sketches out where you want to put the highlights. It also allows you to apply a good base coat and here we're using the Xeris Purple as a flat colour to cover the entire model. So I'll give it a little mix. I think this is going to be way too thin, but let's have a look. No, I actually think that's fine. Having a white piece of paper beside you to practice on, um, I think it's quite helpful. That is good to thin, which is better than being too thick. So again, you want lots of nice thin layers. And you don't want to do the same part for too long. So if you can see, I don't want to touch it where it's too wet, you can definitely tell the bits that were undercoated lighter. So you've already got that gradient in there before you do any highlight or any low lights. I don't know if low lights is a term people use in painting. It is when you do hair. So I'm just gonna stick with saying low light. Depending on the strength of the zenithal you've applied, you could leave your model here. It does look very good. And for a beginner, that might be a good thing to do. Just put a strong zenithal on, apply a flat base color, and it will naturally color itself. But here, we're gonna go another step further and apply a base color into the shadows. We're using Nagaroth Knight into the shadows to really bring out those recesses. So we're going from underneath. I'm just checking it on the back of my hand to see if anything's actually coming out. Now you are better off holding this at an angle to catch all those little details. I feel like this isn't gonna take much shading. So you can see where I've put it too close there. So I'm gonna blast it with just air and try and dry it a little bit. But we can fix that later anyway. Okay, once you've done all the bottom bit like I've just done, um, take a little step back and you want to see where the actual shadows would be and that's where you want to go over it again. I feel like this model is going to look really good from one side and then you turn it around it's going to look crap but pretty much every model I've ever painted has a good side. <laughs> There's no way I'm alone on that. The reason I keep putting it back on my hand is I have a really bad habit of being too afraid to pull the trigger back enough um, so I'm just checking that paint is actually coming out because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it doesn't. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now there is a little bit of a patch back here that I blasted too hard earlier. So I'm just gonna try and put another little layer over that to hide it. That seems to have worked pretty well. So I'm happy with that. I think Kira has done a great job here. You can see the creases and the folds in this eel flesh because she has applied the darker color from underneath at a slight angle. To make it pop even more though, we're gonna put a third color on this, and this is a highlight. We're using Gene Steeler Purple up onto the higher parts of the model to really make it pop. Now, if this isn't light enough, I might have to go with another lighter color. This is the part that I find most difficult. So when I was using the, ooh, nice. When I was using the shade, I basically did all of the bottom, whereas when I'm highlighting, I don't want to do just along the top. So you wanna pick out the points that are gonna get the most light, and I also want to make it sure and do it at an angle so that I catch these little bits. And that's all well and good to say, but the likelihood of me actually doing that is slim. So we'll just hope for the best. It, it would be easier as well if I had um, it on a stand. So I'm going to do a lot of really thin layers and we will have to go back 
and probably do this a few times. Whoops. I'd like to say that doesn't happen often, but I always find my hands are very small. Um, I do find that airbrush quite difficult to manipulate. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna let that dry for a couple of seconds before I try and do the other side because I know I'm gonna smudge it. But yeah, that's how she's looking. Another couple of layers, I'd say. That's where I slipped. <laughs> this model is almost finished. I know she's gonna apply a tiny bit more, but what a difference those extra coats has made. The light here is very strong, but the model is looking excellent. You can see now where she's applied the highlights, where she's applied the shadows, and where the base coat is sitting. So essentially, that is where we're at. Um, which I'm quite happy with. I might do a tad bit more there and there. But then what I would do after this is done is I would go back with my lightest color or even lighter than that again and do all your little edge highlights that way. Um, but as for painting the, the main body of it, that's pretty much it finished. Um, I'm gonna give it one more touch up and then I'm calling it done because I know I will overdo it otherwise. <laughs> These are some of Kira's first model she's airbrushed and I am really, really impressed. And I hope you guys can take something from this get some confidence to get in there, get stuck in with the airbrush because it isn't that difficult. It just takes time, just takes practice and I hope this video has taught you something. Well done Kira, I am really proud and really impressed with this. There you have it, that's the model all airbrushed up and done. How did you feel that went? Could have gone better, could have gone worse. I'm, I'm really happy with how they turned out in the end. Um, I'd have liked to have been on YouTube not making any mistakes, <laughs> but that's not going to happen. I'd like to think it was a realistic video on how a beginner would airbrush. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. And my models look good, and that's the main thing. I'd say so. I mean, there's a few things in there. I think you sort of oversprayed a few times. Um, we had some paint thicknesses, sometimes too thin, sometimes too thick. But that's that's normal. That's learning. Like you said, uh, it is it is an experience, and it is there's no scientific way to thin your paints, really. It's down to how thick. How, how, how thick the paints are you're using, how strong the pressure of the airbrush is. So it's always going to change and each paint reacts differently as well. I think I do say, you know, you'll just know when it's too thick or too thin. And then I'm painting, I'm like, too thin. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you know, and it's something you learn. So I think you did really well. And that's a quick way really to get those kinds of gradients and those highlights and those shadows onto models quite easily without hours of wet blending or brush work. And it's almost like a hobby cheat really. Uh, I love it, and I hope now you'll start airbrushing more. <laughs> Mainly, I hope you guys start airbrushing more, actually, because um, it, there's still a big fear factor in it. I know a lot of people struggle using it as a tool. I, I've just come to use it more and more now. It's my main favorite thing I use in the hobby. And I hope this video has shown you that it's not that difficult. If, if Kira can do it, then, you know, most of you can do it, probably. <laughs> that might be unfair. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so thanks so much guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, do make sure to hit the subscribe button. Check out all the links below. Make sure to go and check out Kira's Twitch channel as well, Kira Elven Blood. Links are down there. She does painting. She will in fact be probably painting maybe one of these eels to completion on a stream. Maybe, there's no guarantee. Maybe you won't finish them at all. That's what I do. But do make sure to check out, if you want to support the channel, there's all the links down there as well for Patreon. There's links down to Element Games or Grim Dice if you want to buy your models from them. Yeah, just any support really, really helps the channel. There's a wall of fame just here, which you can get your name on as well if you're a top tier patron. Thank you very much, Kira. So yeah, that's it. Thanks, guys. Thank you for me. Thank you, Kira. You're welcome. And I will catch you in another video. Take care. <laughs>